Hi everybody, Dave Vellante back with day two coverage. We're live at the Aria Hotel in Las Vegas for Falcon 22. Uh, several thousand people here today. The keynote was, it was a little light. I think people were out late last night, but the keynote was outstanding and it's still going on. We had a break early because we have to strike early today. But we're really excited to have Stefan Goldberg here, Vice President of Technology Alliances at Clarity. And we're going to talk about an extremely important topic, which is the Internet of Things, the edge. We talk about it a lot. We haven't, we haven't covered securing the edge here uh, at theCUBE uh, this week. And so, Stefan, really excited to have you on. Thank Thanks you for me. having me. T you're very welcome. Tell us more about Clarity. C-L-A-R-O-T-Y, very interesting spelling, but what's it all about? Clarity is a cybersecurity company that specializes in cyber physical systems, um, also known as operational technology systems and uh, the extended internet of things. The difference between the traditional IoT and uh, what, what everyone calls an IoT and a cyber physical system is that an IoT device is anything connected on the network that traditionally cannot carry an agent. Uh, a security camera, a card reader. A cyber physical system is a system that has influence and operates in the physical world, but is controlled from the cyberspace. An example would be a controller, a turbine, a robotic arm, or an MRI machine. Yeah, so those are you know, really high-end systems run, looked after by engineers, not necessarily consumers. So what's, what's happening in that world? I mean, we've talked a lot on theCUBE about the, you know, the, the, the schism between OT and IT. The, haven't really talked a lot, but, but in the last several years they've started to talk more. You look at the ecosystem of, of, of IoT providers, I mean, it's companies like Hitachi and PTC and Siemens, I mean, it's a different names than we're used to in IT. What are the big trends that you're seeing, the macro? So first of all, traditionally, uh, most manufacturers and, and, and environments that were heavy on operations, operational technology, they had the networks air-gapped, completely separated. You had your IT network for business administration, you had the OT network to actually build stuff. Today with uh, emerging technologies and, and you know even modern switching architecture, everything is being converged. You have the same physical infrastructure in terms of uh, networking that carries both networks. Uh, sometimes a human error, sometimes a business logic that needs to interconnect these networks to transmit data from the OT side of the house to the IT side of the house um, exposes the OT environment to cyber threats. Was that air gap by design or was it just that there wasn't connectivity? It was air gap by design due to security and operational reasons and also ownership. In these organizations, the, the IT managed space was, was completely separate from the OT managed space. So whoever built a network for the controllers to build a car, for example, was an automation engineer. And uh, vendors that have built these networks were automation vendors, unlike the traditional Cisco's of the world that, that, that were specializing in IT. Today we're seeing the IT vendors on the OT side, and the OT vendors are ver worried about the IT side. But I mean, tradition, I mean, engineers are control freaks. No offense, <laughs> uh, but, but and as I'm glad they are. I'm, I'm thankful for that. So there, there must have been some initial reticence to them you know, connecting up these air gap systems um, they went, wanted to make sure that they were secure, that they did it right, and, and presumably that's where you guys come in. What are the exposures and risks of, these, you know, of this critical infrastructure that we should be aware of? So, you're completely right, and uh, from an operational perspective, uh, let, let's call it change control is very rigorous. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, they, they did not want to go on the internet and just, uh, we're seeing it with uh, adopt, adoption of cloud technologies, for example. Cloud as in industry 4.0, 5.0. Cloud as in cybersecurity. We all heard Amol's keynote from this morning talking about critical infrastructures and we'll touch upon our partnership in a second. Uh, but CrowdStrike, CrowdStrike being considered and deployed within these uh, environments is a new thing. It's a new thing because the, the OT operation uh, uh, managers and the, the chief information security officers, they understand that Air gap is, is, is no longer a valid strategy. From a business perspective, th these networks are already connected. We're seeing the trends of cyber attacks, IT cyber attacks like NotPetya, and uh, uh, I'm not talking about the Stuxnet, the targeted OT. I'm talking about WannaCry, Eternal Blue, IT vulnerabilities that did not target OT, but due to the outdated and, and, and the, the specification of OT uh, uh, posture on the networks, they hit healthcare, they hit OT much harder than they did IT. 
Was log 4 j did that seep into OT, OT or it, right, any so, IT that? Absolutely. So log so, 4 j right, <laughs> which was so pervasive, like so many of these malwares. All these vulnerabilities yeah. that, that it, it's a Windows vulnerability, it has nothing to do with OT. But then when you stop and you say, hold on, my, my human machine interface workstation, although it has some proprietary software by Rockwell or Siemens running on it, what is the underlying operating system? Oh, hold on, it's Windows. We haven't updated that for like eight years. We were focused on updating the software, but not the underlying operating system. The vulnerabilities exist to a greater extent on the OT side of the house because of the same uh, characteristic of operational technology environments. So the brute force air gap um, approach is, was no longer viable because the business imperative came in and said, no, we have to connect these systems to digitally transform or you know, advance our, our business. There's opportunities to monetize, whatever it was. The business laid that out as an imperative. So now OT engineers have to rethink how they secure it. So, that, that, so what are the steps that they're taking and, and how does Clarity help? Is there a sort of a playbook, you know, a sequential playbook? Absolutely, so be, be, before we discuss the maturity curve of adopting a, 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 a CPS security or OT security uh, technology, let's touch upon the characteristic of the space and what it led vendors uh, uh, like Clarity to build. So you have the, the rigorous chain con control, you have the um, security in mind operations, uh, uh, lower the risk state of mind. That led uh, vendors uh, uh, likes of Clarity to build a solution, and I'm talking about seven, eight years ago, to be passive, passive, mostly passive or passive only, to inspect network and to analyze network and focus on detection rather than taking action like response or preventative maintenance. Mm -hmm. It made the vendors to, to, to build on-prem solutions because of the cloud-averse state of mind of this industry. And because OT is very specific, it led vendors to focus only on OT devices, overlooking what we discussed as IoT. Unfortunately, besides the, the, the HMI and the, and the PLC, the controller in the plant, you also have the security camera. So when you install an OT security solution, I'm talking about the traditional ones, they traditionally overlook the security camera or anything that is not considered traditional OT. These three observations, although they were necessary in the beginning, you understand the shortcomings of it today. Mm -hmm. So Cloudiverse led to on-prem, which leads to worse security. It's like comparing uh, CrowdStrike and one of its traditional com uh, uh, competitors in the antivirus space. What CrowdStrike innovated is the SaaS-first, cloud-native solution that is continuously being updated and, and provide the best in class security, right? And that is uh, uh, very much like, uh, like uh, what, what Clarity is building. We decided to go SaaS-first and, and, and um, um, cloud-native uh, solution. So, so because of cloud aversion, the industry chose somewhat outdated deployment models on-prem, which, which limited scale and, and created greater diversity, more stovepipes, all the problems that we always talk about. Okay, and so is the answer to that just uh, becoming more cloud, um, uh, 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 having more of an affinity to cloud? That was a starting point, uh, right? This is exactly it. Air gap is perceived as secured, but you don't get updates and you don't really know what's going on in your network. If you have a Clarity or a CrowdStrike installed there, you have much higher probability detecting fast and responding fast. If you don't have it, you are just blind. You plus, will be bridged, that's the assumption. I was going to say, plus, you know, air gap, it's true, but people can get through air gaps too. I mean, it's harder, but Stuxnet. you know. Stuxnet. Yeah, look at Stuxnet, right? Oh, it's mopping the floor, boom, or however it happened, but Correct. so yeah. So, but the point being, you know, you assume that breach, even though I know CrowdStrike thinks that the unstoppable breach is a myth, but but you know, you talk to people like Kevin Mandia, it's like, we assume you're going to get breached, right? That's Let's make that assumption. Right. Yep. Okay, and so that means you've got to have visibility into the network. So what are those steps that you would do? What's that maturity model that you referenced before? So on top of these uh, underlying principles, which is uh, cloud native, comprehensive, not OT only, but XIOT, and then uh, um, um, bring that, the verticalization and the OT specificity. On top of that, you're exactly right, there is a maturity curve. You cannot boil the ocean, deploy protections, and change the environment within one day. It starts with discovering everything that is connected to your network. Everything from the traditional uh, uh, workstations to the cameras, and, and of course, ending up with, with the cyber-physical systems on the network. 
that discovery cannot be only a high level profile, it needs to be in depth to the level you need to know application versions of these devices. If you, don't if you cannot tell the application version, you cannot correlate it to a vulnerability, right? Just knowing that's a, a, an HMI or that's a PLC by Simmons is insufficient. You need to know the app version, then you can correlate to vulnerability, then you can correlate to risk. This is the next step, risk assessment. You need to put a score basically on each one of these devices, a vulnerability score or risk score, in order to prioritize action. Mm -hmm. These two steps are discovery and thinking about the environment. The next two steps are taking action. After you have the prioritized act, uh, uh, devices discovered on your network, our approach is that you need to, to lay the land and deploy protections from a preventative perspective. Uh, Clarity delivers um, uh, recommended policies in the form of access control lists or, or, or rules right. that can leverage existing infrastructure to, without touching a device, without patching it, just to protect it. The next step would be detection and response. Once you have these policies deployed, you also can leverage them to spot policy deviations. And that's where CrowdStrike comes in. So talk exactly. about how you guys partner with CrowdStrike, what that integration looks like, and what the differentiation is. So actually the integration with CrowdStrike uh, uh, crosses the, the entire customer journey. It starts with visibility. CrowdStrike and us exchange data on, on the asset level. With uh, the announcement during Falcon, with Falcon Discover for IoT, we, we are really, really proud working on that with CrowdStrike. Traditionally, CrowdStrike uh, discovered and provided data about the IT assets, and we did the same thing with CPS and OT. Today, with Falcon Discover for IoT and, and us expanding to the XIoT space, both of us look at all devices, but we can discover different things. When you merge these data sets, you have an unparalleled visibility into, into any environment, and specifically OT. Uh, the integrations continue, and, and maybe the, the second spotlight I'll put, but without, without diminishing the other ones, is detection and response. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the XDR Alliance. Clarity is very proud to be one of the first partners, XDR Alliance partners for CrowdStrike, fitting in to the XDR, to CrowdStrike's XDR, the data that is needed to mitigate and respond and get more context about breaches in these OT environments, but also take action. Also trigger action via Clarity and leverage Clarity's network-centric capabilities to respond. We, hear a lot, we heard a lot in today's keynote about the data, the importance of data, uh, the, the graph database. How unique is this, Stefan, in the industry, in your view? The, the, the uniqueness of what exactly? Of this joint solution, if you oh. will, this capability. I, I, I told my counterparts from, from, from CrowdStrike yesterday, the go-to-market ones and the product, product management ones. If we are successful with Falcon Discover for IoT, and that product matures as, as we plan for it to mature, it will change the industry, the OT security industry for all of us. Not only for Clarity, for all players in the space. We're, we're, and this is why it's so important for us to, to stay coordinated and support this amazing company to enter the space and um, provide better security to organizations that really support our lives. We got we to gotta leave it there, but this is such an important topic. We've seen in the war in Ukraine, there's a cyber component in the future of war yes. today. And what do they do? They go after critical infrastructure. So protecting that critical infrastructure is so important, especially for a country like the United States, which has so much critical infrastructure and a lot to lose. So Stefan, thanks so much for Thank the you. work that you're doing. It was great to have you on theCUBE. Thank you. All right, keep it right there. Dave Vellante for theCUBE. We'll be right back from Falcon 22. We're live from the Aria in Las Vegas. Thank you.